so we're at the we're at the end here, um, the demonstration of increased or improved services. And when we first started to look at this section, Tammy and I decided that we would try to define the word demonstrate. So we went straight to the, let me go ahead and forward my slide to here, the right spot. You can come join me, Josh. You, meet, you would meet the height requirement. <laughs> I tried to put the, um, the word in red here for definition of demonstrate, to show clearly, to prove or make clear by reasoning or evidence, to illustrate or, and explain, especially with many examples. We thought this was important to note. So we've listed here the code section that um, goes along with that. And I wanted to highlight a couple of things where I think it also follows along with what we're talking about here. We want to review any descriptions. Again, we're, this whole thing is about demonstrating and descriptions. Um, for what we're talking about. So whether the school has fully demonstrated whether it will increase or improve services. And in this slide that we're looking at here, we want to see that um, if the county superintendent of schools does not approve the LCAP because it has failed to meet this requirement, it shall provide technical assistance to the school district. So I wanted to go ahead and um, point that on, out on this slide. And then from the LCAP approval manual, this next slide, I just wanted to focus on the last sentence. Districts are required. This is what we were just talking about with, with Nancy Burnell making the comment about the uh, proportionality and the qualitative versus quantitative. We're all very familiar with that at this point. But again, this is a referral back to the approval manual. So why are we talking about all of this? We are looking here at the actual template and I'm trying to get us all to the point where we would be reviewing this description in the large box here at the bottom. We all know that the dollars for the supplemental concentration grant funds in the two boxes in the middle, that's coming from our LCFF calculator, as well as the percentage. But what we're here today to talk about is what's going in that big box. This is from a prior presentation, and we, we thought it was really meaningful for what we're talking about here today. It covers all of the areas that are required for the descriptions. So you can see on the left, there's the LEA-wide, and on the right, the school-wide, and the different area, arrows, sorry, pointing to the boxes that you need to be looking for as you review the descriptions. So the first exercise that we have planned for you is to go to the handout, looks like this, and apply this chart to this example that's been given. I will give you a couple minutes to talk at your table, and what I'd like to try to do is bring us all back and talk about the boxes here, the purple, the blue, and the green. I know it's probably hard to see and how those descriptions are identified in the box on the right in the printed handout that you have. I'll go ahead and advance the slide and give you a chance to talk. I wanted to go back to the prior slide. So while we're looking at this one, can. I wanted to bring it to your attention why all three boxes are here instead of just two. So as we look at this example, it's a 38% unduplicated pupil percentage. So that means, and they're using a school-wide approach, so I'm looking at this chart here, and you can see that that means that it's going to be this right-hand side, and it's pointing the three arrows, meaning that you really need to look at all three of these boxes for the description requirements. Had this number been over 40%, we'd be only looking at the top two for the unduplicated count. So as we look through the, des the description here, we can see that a, a, in the very first sentence, they're talking about that they're princip principally targeting those pupils. So the purple box has been met there. And then they list in the middle of the large paragraph how they plan on um, effectively meeting the goals of the pupils. And then also at the end, and actually a couple times, but also at the end, they talk about the research, the supporting research experience and educational theory behind using 
these funds on a school-wide approach. So in this example, we find that it's a great explanation or um, description. The great, <laughs> sorry, the, de the description is great. It's a great example to use. So the next step to the right slide here. In an effort to try to get everybody on the same page, we wanted to come forward with some descriptions that we felt may be confusing across the state for county offices looking at LCAPs. And this first case study that we thought was interesting is about special education encroachment and the usage of supplemental concentration dollars to offset it. And so I wanted to have you break again into your table groups and talk about whether you think this is approvable or not. So um, a district calls for a service for which they would like to spend supplemental concentration funding. The encroachment is very high, and the district would like to use the funds to provide the support to promote academic achievement for students with disabilities by hiring special education aides when required by IEPs. So go ahead and take some time to discuss this and see what you think you would do. Approve it? Approvable or not? Time. So in your handout, you already have the answer. I hope that you had some good discussion surrounding it. The service is not considered increased or improved since it was uh, required by the IEP. So I won't read the rest of the slide to you. We're going to go ahead and see what happens, though. What if we strengthen this argument? What if something changes just a little bit? So now, now we are um, changing this. And I don't know that, I think that I'll just let everyone digest it for a second. I don't want to give you a chance to talk at your tables. But we just wanted to show what might make this approvable. Because we know that the prior um, slide was not. But this here, if, it, if the district were to strengthen this with maybe some county office guidance or you know, sitting down and talking to someone about why you know, this is where our support comes in. What could we do to help this district make this approvable? And so by changing it just a little bit, this becomes an approvable expense. Or service, sorry. I'm such a, sorry, CBO talking here. So does everyone see the difference there? Why it's approvable? Okay, so here's the, here's the big question, the big question of the day. So big that I had to call for support. Josh Schultz is going to come up here and answer this question for us, but this has come up quite a few times. And it has to do with the dollar amount that is um, calculated in the LCAP versus the estimated supplemental and concentration and what happens when those two don't match. So Josh is, Josh is here to talk a little bit about that. So first of all, I want to let you know that I was not supposed to be part of the presentation at all today, so <laughs> apparently I'm a sucker. So, um, you know, I know that people have struggled with this, this question, you know, around the state, um, but the bottom line is, you know, it's really the wrong question, right? So the right question is, are they meeting proportionality requirements? Are they demonstrating that they're meeting the needs of the unduplicated pupils that are targeted by LCFF? Um, there is nothing in legislation or regulation that says you have to break out supplemental and concentration even separately from the base LCFF. There is nothing that says you must put a certain percentage in your LCAP. There's not a spending requirement. So that's the bottom line. On the next slide, we have some language that was reviewed and, and, and vetted and been approved by both CDE and State Board staff, you know, that kind of puts that in writing for you in context. But, you know, the question we're trying to answer is, you know, qualitatively or quantitatively, right, either one, are they meeting these requirements? Now, there's nothing to stop a district from choosing to break out supplemental and concentration separately. Uh, there's nothing to stop a district from choosing to be comprehensive in including, you know, their entire budget in the LCAP, and that might include you know, trying to account for every dollar of supplemental concentration in there, 
And we know there are districts that have already been doing it this way, and they may well want to continue because that may be the ex you know, expectation of their lake, local stakeholders, but there is no requirement. That's the bottom line. So, questions? Bill? So we, we've had to respond to district requests and information from advocacy groups saying you need, their, their expectation is that you need to demonstrate supplemental concentration by, by verification and by setting aside and showing that those, what those dollars are and how they're being used. Right. So in, I, I fully appreciate that. Uh, and I recognize that those expectations are out there and I recognize that those expectations are a big part of why this question is floating around, right? Um, and, you know, my response, this, this question's been bouncing around for a while. Um, you know, one thing I think that is helpful is that, um, and, you know, stop me if I'm overstating this, those from the State Board and CDU are here, but, you know, I think we've got CDE and the State Board on board with this is what the requirement is or isn't, right? Um, but, uh, you know, the bottom line is, you know, the exercise is about are you meeting the need of the unduplicated people? So I think we should explain that to the advocates. This is, not, you know, it, it is unrestricted funding. Uh, there is no requirement to track it separately. Um, that's where it is. Uh, that doesn't mean, of course, that that gives people an excuse to go and not serve the needs of these pupils and to not demonstrate in a meaningful way that they're meeting all the regulatory requirements. Um, but how they do that, there is considerable flexibility. Yes. If you had a district that submitted an LCAP and very few actions were identified as um, uh, specifically for to meet the increase or improve, and uh, how do they demonstrate proportionality then? I guess I'm I'm getting a little confused on that. What right. would what would be the criteria to demonstrate proportionality? if you didn't see in there yeah. significant actions and services yeah. for unduplicated pupils? Well, you know, I don't think there's a, a simple answer for that. You know, I mean, one thing, of course, is, you know, what is their proportionality requirement, right? Um, and that varies for every district. Um, you know, a, another part of it is, uh, you know, so, I mean, think about when it talks about the regulation, say, you know, you can demonstrate this qualitatively, right? So th there's not a simple answer for what that looks like, but I think there uh, are uh, arguments and, and, and angles that could be taken that might meet that standard. You know, that, that for instance, uh, I'm gonna get myself in trouble here by trying to make something up off the top of my head, but you know, that, that you know, by engaging in this initiative and providing this you know, training, et cetera, it may not cost us 25% more, but it might make our teachers 25% more effective, we believe, in delivering this particular type of instruction that this particular population needs. Um, and, you know, so it, it comes back to, again, you know, does that, did they authentically engage their stakeholders? Uh, does their community believe that this is the appropriate approach? Um, you know, but there is a lot of flexibility. That's, that's the bottom line. So you mean not checking any boxes as, as targeted? I don't think so. No, I mean, I, I don't know how you could have no boxes targeted and, you know, checked and, as targeted and then say you're meeting the requirement. And, and again, as we're working with districts, you know, I think we all recognize that really most districts are doing a lot of things to try to meet the needs of English language learners and most districts are trying to do a lot of things to meet the needs, I, I believe, right, at least in my experience and in, in the districts I've had experience with, they're doing a lot of things to try to help, you know, students who are coming from disadvantage to achieve you know, why wouldn't they want to try to capture all of those things effectively in their LCAP? So I think that's really where the work is, is, you know, what are the strategies you're doing to try to meet these? How are you trying to close the achievement gap? You know, why would you want to say in your LCAP, I'm not really trying very hard to close any of our achievement gaps? And especially now that we've got the dashboard and it's going to put it out there in everybody's face, right? So, so I guess I would hope you won't get that very often. Um, 
So I, I also want to revisit for a second this question, you know, to Nancy's comments about trying to come to some common understanding about, you know, breaking out expenditures and whether it's required or not required and, and how it's required. And I think, you know, the only really definitive answer we can give in my mind is, you know, the, I think the criteria that is applicable in this case is, is, is the LCAP aligned with the budget, right? So it depends on the context. You need enough information to make a reasonable judgment that the LCAP is aligned with the budget, that, that there are dollars in the budget to cover the expenditures that they're listing in the actions and services. Right? And uh, you know, Judy pointed out that in an earlier training there was an example that I think was kind of deemed probably approvable, that where a district had you know, $211 million for ones, twos, and threes. You know, there was kind of like a base program statement of you know, high quality teachers, classified, et cetera. Um, you know, it, if you look at the total LCAP and you determine well, yeah, that's most of their program, and it's there in the budget, and those numbers match up with what I see in the budget, then maybe combining them like that could be okay. I mean, that's, that's really the issue, is, you know, is it aligned with the budget? Can you identify where the dollars are in the budget? So I, I'm gonna back off a blanket statement of major object range must be broken out. It, the question is, you know, can you, the reviewer, make a regional judgment that it is aligned with the budget and that the expenditures that are in the LCAP are in the budget? And I hope that's helpful, but maybe it just confuses people. Well, and I just wanted to add to that, that that it was very important to have the definition of demonstrate at the beginning because it says giving examples or using samples. And um, that's, if we did disapprove an LCAP, that's what's going to be used against us in a court of law. <laughs> so it's, I, I just think we can't, while we can talk to our districts about being more transparent, about always being better with, um, with our stakeholders and stuff, there's, if the question is approvable or not approvable, we, we have to also follow the law, so. Okay, I'm gonna run before there are more questions. <laughs> so Tammy's last comment is a perfect uh, segue into where we wanted to pull this piece back together. So as you think about all five sections now of the LCAP, we go back to what are those three criteria by which we approve. And we know that there's uh, lots of little X's we saw in various places for samples. And we have to come back to that larger context, right? So part of this is helpful for us as a group to be able to say, in the next few months as we work with districts, we want to be proactive in providing support to help them understand the kinds of things that would make for uh, strong actions, uh, strong ways to show to stakeholders, whether that be in a plan summary, uh, what are those pieces that would be really uh, helpful to the development of their LCAPs? But then when we get to July, then we put on our hat and say, can we approve this? And would for one X, we not approve? You know, that's where we have to look at the larger context of the LCAP and say, does this by and large meet what's required for approval? Uh, and so it's, it's looking at it in its entirety, although today we broke it down segment by segment. And part of that is a learning of what goes in so that we can, in our work with districts over the course of the next several months, be able to inform them because several of these sections are new or have been revised uh, to better know how to complete them. But ultimately, we come back, as Tammy mentioned, to these three areas for approval. And within number one, adherence to the template, you see this includes following the instructions for completing the template. Uh, and within that is where we see a lot of the information that was shared in the detail at which we look. Uh, but that's looking overall at all five sections. Uh, and so being mindful of uh, is, is the bulk of it, do we really have the heart of it identified within this? Uh, LCAP, and so it's, it's a balance, right? We all make those decisions once the LCAPs are approved and in our hands of 
uh, does this, are we able to move this forward?